Right, my name is Colin McMaster from the McCline Photo Agency. Obviously, I'm the Mac bit in that. And I'm here today to explain a little bit about my favourite images from Rally Portugal down the years, which uh, well, there's been quite a few in my case because the first time I went to Portugal was 1995. I think it's important to get the elephant out of the room. The faff jump. Fafé, faff, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Let's call it faff. But uh, it's not my favourite place in Rally Portugal, but it certainly is one hell of a spectacular place. Are we allowed to use that language? Too late. Anyway, Fafa jump. Uh, this is my favourite picture from the jump of all time. It's Colin McRae, 1999. Nice sunny day. And it was in the days when there was still a little bit of wildness about the place and the crowds were perfect to frame the crowds. Uh, and this magazine was a great magazine at the time, Rally XS. Yeah. Uh, it came out every two months and McLean were the photographic agency for the magazine and this was, I think, their first ever issue. Totally honest that I don't like going to places where lots of other photographers go and you can't avoid it in a place like this. You know, they're, they're all there. And so are thousands of spectators, of course. So for me, can I get something unique when all my competition, call them competition, but when all the other photographers are there? And for me, this, no one else stood there with this is a very, very long lens. I took a 500 millimeter lens. So it was used on the cover of this magazine and in this lovely book made to celebrate 50 years of Rally Portugal two years ago. Uh, a great friend of mine put this book together. He used it. He asked me for the picture, so there we go. Used it. Now that's how a picture should be used. <laughs> uh, double page. So anyway, he's, he asked me to write about it and uh, I said, iconic driver, iconic stage, iconic jump, iconic livery, a dramatic win for McRae. He pulverized the opposition on the first three stages of the rally. Now we've got Faf out of the way. It leads on nicely because the same magazine, the headline, Maxim McRae, this magazine, they asked Colin McRae to go through the McCline photo archive and pick out his favorite the client images and talk about them. So that, that was the story in the magazine. And uh, he chose one, which I can, I'll point to it there. However, it happens to be my favorite photo of McRae and it was done in Portugal, which uh, at the time I was doing quite a lot of in-car images and photography. Nobody else was doing it at the time and I had some great access. So this was, uh, it was a Portugal pre-event test for Subaru. There was no shakedown test in those days. The teams all did their own independent uh, testing. So I went, I spoke to the team beforehand. I was working for Subaru at the time. Uh, I spoke to Colin and Nicky and we all set it up that I would put the camera in the car when they were doing their test runs. And of course, McRae being McRae, he sussed out exactly what was going on because there was a flash inside the car and it would trigger every 10 seconds. So when they, they worked all this out, him and uh, Gristy, and Colin wrote about the picture. He said, I remember this sh shoot. It was in Portugal with Colin McMaster. That was for him, that one. We had to do a normal run, so we decided to have a bit of fun as well. And what I really love about it was it was shot on film. And when they came back to where the Subaru service area was, they, these two came out of the car giggling like mad, and uh, I had no clue, absolutely no clue. They didn't tell me. And with film, you didn't see the results until the Monday or whatever after the rally, I think in those days it finished on a Tuesday or Wednesday, so you didn't have a clue. And I remember getting the film, so excited to see this film because you just don't know yourself how it's gonna turn out. And of course you go through the roll of film, you think, what's going on here? And then you look really closely and you see that they've given the bird to the camera. But the best bit, the best bit about it was that 10 seconds later, the next frame, they're still absolutely in hysterics, the pair of them. And they're driving along. You can see the gravel, the dust flying everywhere. You think. So he's flat out laughing. Like a couple of schoolboys. Exactly. So <laughs> it's a little bit different, but that's uh, certainly, I'd, I'd go further than saying that's one of my favorite for Portugal pictures. I'd say it's one of my favorite pictures of all time. And the reason I showed you the picture in a frame, I don't have 
many pictures of rallying in my house or my office or anything. You'd struggle. People come to my house, they've got no clue what it is I do. But I've got this one. This is in my office. There's a few in my office, which, and they have to be super special to make it. Next one, uh, same year, actually, 97. 97 was a good vintage for me. Uh, this lovely book here by McCline, uh, rally, imaginatively titled Rally. Uh, I've got to show you something first, actually. Well, not one of mine, but my, uh, my business partner, Reinhard, Reinhard Klein. Look at this. This is Portugal 84. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, basically what you've got is uh, an empty road, same angle with a car coming. And that's what it was in 84. Crowd, crowd control, that was the Achilles heel for this rally, you know, and it's, uh, things were gonna get to a, a pretty nasty head, but that was back in 84. Uh, so, right, my one, for Portugal 97, it was to give you an idea with the crowds, but this is, this image here, right, it's a little, it's a, it was basically a pond, a man-made pond, water splash, a place called Lixa. Uh, and I'm, they don't use this stage anymore and I really wish they do. Now, I arrived here, I've never been here before and I've been told about this. This isn't the picture, but I'm in it. I couldn't find anywhere, I arrived quite late and you, you arrive here and there's thousands of people. So I managed, I'm just looking at this upside down, I am here. Wow. Yeah, I've basically crawled underneath a TV tower sort of wooden uh, box structure with the cameraman. I've spoken to him, he said, yeah, okay. And I've crawled in underneath and the, the police, are, yeah, there's lots of police on the side here. They've okayed it. So I basically got the pole position uh, to do the shot. And it's, uh, as you see with this, it's full sunshine, but I'm looked straight into the sun. So the picture I got, I just got to have to show you this. It's a Japanese uh, magazine, <laughs> so, typical Japanese. It was all about, McCline's year with working with Subaru in 97 and uh, they chose this image and they gave it the best caption I've ever seen so there's the picture funky dabbling <laughs> I just love it for pure uh, internationalism and uh, something completely different that is one of my favorite it's, it's just a great memory it's not a great picture it's badly used and everything it's got a silly caption but I absolutely love it the Millennium 2000 uh, this was state-of-the-art uh, navigation uh, you'd say no, it's made by Garmin other navigation devices are also available but they weren't back then there was no TomTom -tom. this was just about it and I had one of these so with my mate, Reinhard, we uh, did a full recce of Arganil, uh, looking for, we spent days in there looking at gravel roads, access roads. And there was one place we found on the stages there, which was uh, purple heather. As far as the eye could see, purple heather, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now, Port Rally Portugal, we said before, thousands and thousands of spectators. We got to this place and there was literally no one because you can't find it. It's, and the locals, it's only local, local, local people who might know about this. Google Maps didn't exist. If you came from Porto or uh, Algarve or something, you wouldn't have a clue. You wouldn't know where you're going. So it all worked. We got there and uh, I was really, really pleased with the, the pictures. And uh, I don't know if you see it, you can clearly see here all this purple heather. And I think to the best of my knowledge, that's the only place this picture's ever been used in this uh, yearbook, an annual for the, the year. However, uh, Richard Burns, my mate Richard, he won the rally. That's the same location. I lied when I said no one else was there. There was a TV cameraman there. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, this, so this is Burnsy at that location in Argon Hill on a rally where he debuted uh, a brand new Subaru car. Uh, the 2000 car. It was back then, it was quite typical for some manufacturers started the season with the old car while they developed the new car. And uh, in this instance, Subaru started the first two rounds with the old car, maybe three. And they brought the 2000 car out in Portugal that year and absolutely annihilated everyone. And Bernsey won the rally. And it was, a Chris, it was the first Christian Lorio car for the, now M Sport, but that was his first Subaru car. So this magazine, all about uh, Subaru, 
Only Japanese can do this, can't they? Only the Japanese can make a magazine just on one car. And they, again, as I said, they know how to use a picture properly. That's definitely, that picture of Burnsy and Argon Hill is in my top five for sure. This, uh, maybe you've seen this. It's uh, McCline's calendar, quite small. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> little pocket size uh, calendar we do every year and uh, this picture Timu Suninen uh, 2019 Rally Portugal and there's a story behind this a uh, good friend of mine Paolo Maria from Portugal he gave me a little heads up for a little gravel road he found and uh, in 19, um, 19 2017 2018 took this gravel road to that location parked up and it was literally a couple of hundred meters before the stage perfect and I always remember parking on that gravel road thinking I wish they used this as a stage start and in 2019 they did they changed the start so it's parked at the church walked up the old stage start and I knew from the gravel road before where I'd parked that this was something special and that's exactly what this is this is where I was parking for two years yeah, so you've got a huge jump here by this granite rock and of course I set this up on a remote remote control because it was a bit iffy and I'm glad I did you know because later a couple of cars crashed at the same spot but uh, Timu was the best I thought I thought this was picture of the year when I had that I thought great you know this is that's me I've bagged it but oh. so the public felt otherwise but you know what the best thing is about this is if you from where I was stood pretty close to my tripod all I had to do was turn 180 degrees and that's what you see. So two for the price of one. Vieira de Mino, this is what I'm talking about, the big open area with the gravel, the rocks and the people. So that those two images were roughly the same time. I don't know who which driver this is, it doesn't really matter, but it's, uh, no, it doesn't say, but Vieira de Mino stage has become a fan favorite for Saturday and Rally Portugal. At the beginning of the stage, there is good access to the expansive, open and rocky landscape where it is possible to see the cars negotiate many corners at high speed for well over a kilometre. Great location. Mm -hmm.